Okay, so that was a lot there, but these are, the, these are the three big pieces of value pricing, and there are entire books written on this, so I'm not doing it complete justice, but that's the idea. The pros and cons. It's potentially huge financial upside immediately. If you're, if you're leaving a lot of money on the table, you can immediately like double your prices. It's much easier to write com compelling proposals that close. It's way easier. Anybody do like spend an entire weekend to put together a pitch to do a dog and pony show for a client on Monday? Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. These are really easy to write. They're focused on business outcomes. It's just, it's a, it, it takes practice, but if you're getting practice, if you have like, you know, you're doing multiple leads per month and you're writing these proposals, it becomes very easy over time to crank out a, you know, $100,000, $250,000. I even had a $3 million uh, proposal that was like five pages long. And it positions you as a partner, not an order taker. The, you're not gonna, you don't let them boss you around in the sales interview, you don't let them boss you around in the proposal process, and you're not gonna let them boss you around on the project. If you think something is gonna jeopardize the product, project, even though the client wants it, you're gonna say no. Because you're there in their best interest, you're acting in their best interest. The cons for value pricing are that it requires a complete mind shift. In, even, in my experience, even when you think you've done it, you're still doing cost plus. You're still doing that conversation wrong. You're still in that sales meeting thinking about scope and hours and how am I gonna solve this and what things in my toolkit can I bring. Don't think about any of that stuff. You don't have to think about any of that stuff. You're worried, you're there to, to diagnose the client's situation, decide if their self-diagnosis was a good one or a bad one. It takes a lot of practice. It, it, it took, I mean, it's hard to remember, it probably took me at least a year before I stopped thinking scope in a sales interview. It takes a long time. Uh, and then the last part, it is risky for people who are people pleasers and want to say yes to everything. If you haven't got it in you to say no, this probably will, it will teach you very quickly that you should get good at saying no, let's put it like that. But you do have to control the scope creep. Okay.